think our time is just about there. So we're going to get started soon. So this is what we're going to be painting today. If you didn't see the preview on our website or on our Facebook page, we're going to be painting this nice wreath of flowers. So all around here, and then you can put your name in the middle. So I just put PGPL for the Prince George Public Library. But if you want to put your name, or maybe if you want to give it as a gift to someone, you can put their name in the middle. All sorts of options. But we're going to see how to paint all these different flowers around this wreath here. So if anyone didn't see the supplies you're going to need, you're going to need some kind of canvas. So you don't need a real canvas. If you want to do it on a piece of paper, or if you've got a piece of wood you want to paint, there's all sorts of options. You just need something flattish that you can paint on top of. So I've got a real canvas here. This one's just the one I've already done. So I'll be pulling out my canvas. So that's what you're going to need. And your favorite paints. So as you can see here, I did all blues and greens, but if you want to do different colors, you are welcome to do that. So if you want to do it all nice warm colors, so grit, sorry, if you want to do yellows and oranges and reds, you are welcome to do that. If you want to do a mix of colors and do pink and green and blue and orange, you can do whatever colors you want. It's up to you, whatever you want to pick. I just like the look of these nice blues, so that's why I've gone with blue altogether. And then you're going to need some paintbrushes, obviously, for those paint paints. Um, for this, because it's lots of round, soft shapes, I'd recommend if you have any round brushes, so ones that have that nice curve on the top instead of having it nice and square, that's what I would recommend using <laughs> for the paintings. We're going to use round brushes uh, with whatever paints you want. And then the last thing we're going to need is a black felt marker. So I have a black Sharpie here. Um, mine is fine. If you're doing it a smaller, I would even recommend using a black pen. So if you're going to, so my canvas is about one and a half, two foot canvas. So if you have anything smaller than that, I would recommend using a black pen because you don't want your lines to be too thick. So a fine Sharpie a black pen, a fine um, dry erase marker, anything like that would work great. So those are all the supplies you need. That's And obviously some imagination. So we're going to need a canvas, some paints, some brushes, and a black felt marker. And that's all you need to paint our beautiful design here. So with that said, let's get started. So I'm going to put my my finished one away and we're going to pick up our new white one so I'm going to be kind of following around what I did with the last one but the joy of this painting is that it's totally free form and it doesn't have to follow any rules so I'll bring this a little bit more forward so if you want to follow along with the exact shapes I'm doing you're welcome to do that if you're wanting to go off the rails a little bit more that's fine too. So because we have a wreath here, you might want to make a big circle on your canvas just to mark where you have to go. So if you have something light, I have a pencil around here, but it's vanished on me. That's all right. So I'm just going to use a pen to make a big circle on the canvas where I want the wreath to go, just so I can follow that wreath along. So we're going to go, Whoa. okay, so you can barely see my lines there, but I've done a big circle just to keep myself in line when I'm making my wreath. So one thing that I did is I had some really big statement flowers in this one. So I had this big statement flower in this corner and then another big statement flower in that corner. So I'm going to do the same thing. So when we're drawing, doing these flowers, when we're painting them, because a lot of this painting is actually drawing, so we're going to be using our felt a lot, but first we're going to paint. So we're going to be painting four main shapes. So this is what I call the star. So obviously it's a flower, <laughs> but the way you can draw it, where's my marker again, is if you make a 
then you just have to follow those. So if you do, 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 there's a star. So then if you just make little round petals around all the ends of your star, you end up with a flower. Underneath it is just the teardrop. So nice and simple, just like a tear falling off your face. Another one we here have here, another shape is our oval. So it's really elongated. So you wanna make that oval really long. You can do it up too. Um, so an oval that's like that shape, but we're mostly gonna do ovals that are this long shape. And then our last one is just a plain circle. So those are the four shapes we're really going to be concentrating on and using to paint our flowers. Okay, so I'm gonna just blob on some blue and we gotta get started somewhere. This is always the hardest part of starting a painting. So I'm gonna go blob, oh my gosh. And we're gonna blob, I'm gonna blob a big oval right here. It's my big dramatic flower. So when you're doing these shapes and all these flowers, I want you to be really messy with your edges and not worry about blending it or keeping your edges really straight and flat because the joy of this painting is how random and how easy it is to just get, get going with all the different shapes. Because once you start drawing on it, you get to really narrow in on the, what the flower is going to look like. And you don't have to worry about keeping only one color on your brush. So I just went in with some purple, but I'm gonna keep some blue on my brush too for the next flower. So I'm gonna do another kind of ovally shape right beside it and you see even though it's not mixed together it has kind of that blue around the outside but then it's purple on the inside and it makes it a really pretty combo and i'm going to kind of have these two flowers touching they're just hanging out with their buds all right and so you just want to keep going with all these different shapes so i'm going to do another oval over here maybe more of a circle shape down here and you just wanna keep using different colors and smattering different shapes. So it's all about having a different dynamic of different shapes and different flowers. So you wanna have them different sizes as well. So maybe this one's gonna be a bit bigger. And again, you can see how the different colors kind of meld together. That's not really as light as some of the other ones. brush off so we can grab some different lighter colors without mixing in that darker color okay and we'll go this way okay and then we're gonna do a star shape so like I said we're gonna do a star Oop. so there's our little star you can see it nice and simple and then we're just going to blob out some petals each of the ends of those points so then it makes the flower nice and even you don't have to worry about having wonky petals as much but even if you have wonky petals don't worry about it this painting is perfect for wonky petals all right so i've got some white in, in my palette back here too so if i want to do a lighter color than one I just put on, then I can do a lighter color. So I'm gonna do a really small oval right there just to fit in nice beside it. All right. And so I'm gonna do another star, just so we can look at it again. So I'm gonna do a star shape with my brush. See the little star here, I'll go up nice and close. You can see how it really does look like a star when I first do it. And then just blob petals, the ends of your star. Ooh, yeah, that one's looking a little more rough, but that's perfect for me. Alrighty. So we just have to do the same kind of pattern all the way around our, our circle here, our wreath. So because mine's pretty big, this is gonna take me a little while, so. You're just gonna have to bear with me here as we go around and around our circle. So we wanna make sure we're spreading out all different shapes and colors. So 
So I just noticed here, I haven't done a teardrop shape, so we'll do a teardrop shape next. Let's do a purple teardrop. So I just like to do a little triangle. That's going to be the tear part of my teardrop. And then I swoosh around to make the circle at the end of the teardrop. So you kind of swoosh, and it got a little bit wonky. See, mine are getting a little bit wonky too. So if yours are getting wonky, don't worry about it. Because that's what mine's gonna look like right now. And I'm not gonna worry about it because I'll fix it when we draw on top of it. All right, and I'm gonna keep going. I'm going to make another oval down here. Just want to keep making all these flowers. So it looks a lot like a bunch of blobs on a paper, right? So that's what it starts out looking like. And it takes a little while to make it look nice, but we will get there. So I just switched to a smaller brush because I just want to do some little flowers here. I just want to have a little more, just a few more small flowers. Maybe I'll add one over here while I've got my smaller brush out using a really big brush because I want it to be able to go quick, but if you have a smaller brush and it's taking you more than one stroke to get your flower in, that is completely all right. I just grabbed a really big one so I could move fast. Okay, we've got some different colors. I'm gonna do a big star here. So we're gonna draw a nice big star. This is a really light color, but that's just because I started. So once again, it is absolutely a little star there, but we're going to blob and make petals at the ends. So then I got this color by mixing purple and a blue I have with some white. So then I have a nice, light blue. Alrighty. I think I'm liking that guy. Alright. And we can keep moving along. So if you've got different, lots of different colors, you might have to switch between brushes a little more often because you won't be able to squish all the colors together nicely like if you're using all the same palette. So if you're using all cold colors or warm colors, you'll just be able to switch between them and if they blend together, they'll look beautiful. However, if you've got more, you know, different colors, if you're using like a purple and a green and orange, when those mix together, those usually end up being brown. So if you end up with some of that, that's completely okay. But try to wash your brush between using those colors just because then you won't end up with as much residual color and it'll look a little more, the, the real color you want it to stand out will shine a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna do a circle. Circles are nice and easy with round brushes. You just kind of twist the brush, twist, and it turns into a circle. Those are always my favorite. Those are nice and simple, nice and easy. All right. I always like grabbing a new color. It's like, what combo am I going to do this time? Alrighty, let's do. So now we've kind of reached the end. So now if you want to move between going from one side to the other, you can make it fit a little bit better. So I'm going to have to put something in there. Hmm, I'm not sure. I haven't done very many teardrops. Why don't I do a teardrop in the corner here? That'll fit so nicely. So I'm going to do a little triangle and then sweep it down to make my little teardrop. There you go. Yeah, that looks pretty good. <laughs> so obviously we're not very close to being done, but now we're done the main part. So now I see a few little gaps that I'm not too happy with, just cause there's not enough flowers. I left some little spaces, so you know, it happens. So I'm gonna go back with my littler brush and I'm just gonna do smaller flowers in those areas. So like right here, I'm gonna do a really small star
star. And I'm going to blob, blob all my little ends of my star so then I have a really small flower there. I think I'm going to do that in a few different spots with different colors just to fill in the gaps that I left when I was going around with the first pass. And if you find you have some bigger gaps, you can put bigger flowers. You think I'm going to put an oval right here, just because it seems to be lacking some stuff right there. I'll just throw a few more on here, but don't think I'll put too many more. Just to give it a little more dimensions. And if you have too many holes, don't worry, because we still have to go in with leaves. So you don't have to worry if you've got too, too many holes because we've got leaves that we can fill holes with still. Just do a tiny little star flower down at the bottom there. All right, so that's what mine looks like. I'm pretty happy with it right now. Maybe we'll do a little bit close up. So as you can see, there's lots of scuffs. There's lots of edges that are not straight. There's lots of like, things that are that are wrong in the traditional sense but that's just how I want it so I'm gonna leave it just like that and I'm going to clean off my small brush and I'm going to get an even smaller brush so I've got these two ready to go because next we're going to do some leaves so for leaves, this is a little bit of a preview of what's going on, we're going to do these kinds of shapes. So you want to make them kind of um, diamondy or a little more straight or nice and curved. And then there's a few of these that you can throw in there. So they're nice and long and then they've got these little off shapes. So obviously we don't need them to be that detailed, but those are the shapes that we're going for with these leaves. So. You want to throw in some leaves wherever you feel they fit. I'm going to put one over here. Just because this is how I had it before. So I'm just kind of following my stencil of what I did before. They're already not looking super similar, but go with the flow. Oh, I didn't grab the paint there. Got old paint. And so. If you want to make them just coming off the flower and have a flat bottom, you can do that. So just like this. So those two have that curved edge on the bottom, but this one, because I put it right next to the leaf, it's got this flat edge that kind of just follows the flower. You can go make them nice and long and kind of soft round leaves. So I've got three different green colors for my leaves as well. But if you're doing a different color scheme, you don't have to use green if you don't want to. Like you could do red and orange leaves like it was in the fall. Or if you want to be really crazy, you could do all sorts of colored leaves. You could do purple leaves or pink leaves. Any color you feel these leaves should be, they can be totally up to you. So we're going to just keep grabbing some paint and throwing our leaves in here. Oh, I forgot to mention too, um, you can do like a trio. So one little leaf and then two sticking out just like that. So if there's any little corners that you think that feels right to stick in, you can stick those in. If you want to put two leaves right beside each other, Sometimes that fills out the space a little bit nicer, so like I did up in this corner here. And then some of, if you have a place that feels really empty, I didn't really leave a good spot for it in mine, but you can do one of those really long, <laughs> one of those really long leaves. So I'm gonna stick it in right here. So we're gonna have this kind of go up like that. We're gonna put a little blob at the end, and then we're gonna do blobs coming off the sides like that. So that's what my little long leaf looks like. It's not very fancy right now. And then I think I'm going to put 
another one maybe right here just kind of crawling out and we'll do some blobs and we'll keep moving with our regular leaves so you kind of just want to put the leaves on until you feel like it's complete obviously if you're still working on your flowers you want to finish your flowers before you start going in with leaves just to make sure that you're not going to accidentally put a leaf where you think a flower should go. But this takes, takes a little bit sometimes and it's not quite as fun as doing the flowers, but we got to make sure it has that wreath feel to it. Because when you have a real wreath, you have all sorts of different leaves sticking out from different places. So we want to get that, that feeling conveyed with our leaves. All right, starting to come together here. I usually don't paint like this, so this is an interesting experience for me. Usually I like to put the painting right on my lap and just paint from there, but. This is gonna keep leafing it up. finish here. Maybe I'll put a few more in the sides. So you want to make sure you're not neglecting the sides of your wreath or the inside. You want to make sure you're putting the leaves around the outside as well as the inside. Ooh, we're losing the edge there. So you can see I have some along the edge. And you want to make sure you're putting some on the bottom and on the top. So maybe I should stick one popping at the top. They can be all sorts of shapes and sizes. If you don't like the shapes I have for leaves, you're welcome to do your own, as well as for the flowers, really. If you think there's a shape I'm missing, you can always add it on yours. No harm done. All right. We're looking pretty leafy here. Looking pretty full. Okay. So this is the part where if you're using different kinds of paints, you might have a different situation. So I'm using acrylics. So my paints, right where we started, are pretty much dry already. So I'm gonna start drawing on them soon. If you're using um, watercolors, it should be a similar situation where, sorry, where your paints are almost done. But if you are using oils or any kinds of paints that take longer to dry, you might have to go get a blow dryer to dry it off or you can just keep watching and once you think your paints are ready to go then you can start drawing on them just kind of watching along and of course this video will be up after it's done so then you can follow along afterwards yeah mine are looking pretty dry so what we're gonna do is with these different shapes we're going to draw these different flowers so the thing with this type of flower, so I put up here, this is inspired by Katie Canvas, was the artist that I saw this do this style first that I really enjoyed. So it's really squiggly. So if you look at any of these really close up, you can see it's super squiggly and the lines are gone over more than once and the insides are just a bunch of squiggles. But it has this really unique shape. So all of these are just all squiggles, squiggles, squiggles. They're all just absolutely filled with squiggles. But that unique kind of way of drawing on it makes it look really cool when they're all together. So even though it's really random and really messy, it has a really cool look to it. So that's what I've done with all mine. So with the star shape, we're going to do flowers like this. With the circle shape, we're either going to do flowers like this, or flowers like that, or flowers like this. <laughs> and then with these ovals, we'll do ones with the petals coming down, or with the petals coming up. So those two shapes. And then the teardrop is going to kind of look like this guy here. So when you put them all together, they look incredibly cool. 
So and even the small flowers, <laughs> we're gonna just do really simple with those squiggly shaky lines. So when we go through, the more lines you, more times you go over, you see how that looks really cool? Because I went over it and I went over it so many times over and over again. So that's what gives it a really cool look is having those squiggly lines going over and over each other. So the mess, more messy you are, the better it looks. So that's our, our goal. Let's be super messy with our marker here. We don't want any thin straight lines. We want lots of messy squiggles and going over things over and over and over again to try to make it more fun. So these are the flowers I'm going to be looking at because we're going to try and make these flowers just over and over again. And you know, no flowers, two flowers look exactly the same. So we're going to end up with some different looking flowers. But these are the goals. <laughs> so if you want to follow along with my flowers, I'm going to start up here, I think. I'm noticing I've got a few blobs of paint that I didn't squish down. So I think I'm going to do that just quick. So if you've got any blobs of paint, if you just smear them down, make them flat, they dry a lot faster, and then you can draw on top of your flowers without having to worry too bad. I don't even know how that happened, that's interesting. Okay, so we can start with our markers. So I've got, like I said, my fine point Sharpie here, so it's, it's pretty fine. But yeah, if you've got something smaller than this, I would even try using a black mark, a black pen, just because it really does have, you know, really thick lines, the Sharpie sometimes. And if you want to have that small squiggly lines that go over each other again and again and again, you can't really have that with a Sharpie if you've got a small painting. If you've got even one of the sharper Sharpies, that would work really well. But this one is just right for mine. Okay, so I'm gonna move this close so you can see me and I'm gonna disappear, but we're gonna work right together on this one. So I'm going to try and do this flower here on this guy. So the first thing I do for a flower like this is I make the first big petal. So this petal here, ooh, I got paint on it. This big petal here right at the bottom. So I wanna try and find where the middle of my flower is and then I Kind of, ooh, my Sharpie's not working. Oh, that might be disastrous. Then I pull down on either side of it, and then I do a nice squiggly line along the bottom, except, ooh, my Sharpie's not working at all. We might have some problems here. So you pull that down. And then you move on to the next petal. But I think I'm gonna try and find a different marker really quick. So if you're having any issues, if you wanna catch up, now is the time. And I will go find a different marker. Let's see if this one will work a little bit better. There we go. That one's writing a little bit better, so we're gonna use this one. All right, so that's our big petal on the bottom there. And we just kind of move petals upwards to the top. So we'll do another one there, another one there, and then one at the very top. So right now, you can see the black lines. That's what ours kind of looks like. But we're going to go back and go over all the lines and we're going to squiggle them out. We're gonna make them really squiggly. And then in the middle, we're gonna do a bunch of circles. You want to make the circles really dense, really squiggly to make the center of our flower here. And if you go onto the white, that's absolutely fine. I kind of like the way it looks when you pull the white into the flower. Okay, and that's what our flower looks like. Wow, how did it get there, right? It looked so weird a second ago. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to pull lines down on all of our petals. So then we're gonna push up 
and there's all of our lines. And then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go back and forth and make those a little squigglier. Go over them more than once to have that squiggly look. And then I like to go in and just do some dots here, there, and everywhere just to give it a little more of a shape. You wanna pull some smaller ones up. That works too. I just wanna make sure I can see it. And there you are. So there's our first flower. Looking pretty cool, right? All right, so. That's what that one looks like. So we're just gonna keep repeating that same kind of thing on all of our flowers here. So I'm just gonna make sure this one's dry for me. And so I'm gonna be doing the next one. So I think I'm gonna try and do this guy here, right here. So it's got five little petals, and there's you can see here that they're super squiggly, all the squiggly lines, lots of lines leading into the middle with a super squiggly middle. So the first thing you wanna do is try and find your five petals. So mark your middle, tiny, tiny middle of <laughs> my flower, and just kind of mark off it doesn't have to be exact. All right, there are my five petals. So I follow one of those lines and squiggle the top to the next one. Dip down, squiggle, dip down, squiggle, dip down, squiggle, dip down, squiggle. And there are five petals. All right, and then once again, I'm gonna go back over all these lines, make them nice and squiggly, nice and messy. Make it silly. And squiggle in the middle to give it a center. So there we go. And then we're gonna take our lovely marker, which has working so well, and make little marks going out with the petals just to give it a little more dimension. So those marks will make it look like the center is lower than the other petals, which is what we want it to look like. Right, and there is our second one. So those are our two flowers thus far. Looking pretty good, doing pretty good. <laughs> and we're gonna keep going with our flowers. Yeah, those look pretty good. I have to keep turning it so I can see it as well. So this one had a little bit of wet paint, so I'm not, I think I'm gonna skip that one just cause it does feel a little bit wet. Does this one feel okay? I just don't wanna be, you don't wanna be drawing on wet paint. That is not a good thing to do. I think we're gonna move all the way along to this guy here, this lighter one. And so this is another oval, so we're gonna try and do the other oval shape we had. This one where it's kind of, curving up. So with this one, you wanna start with these two bottom petals, just like the other one, we wanna start with the bottom. And we're going to make this one here and have it attached to the other one, and then we'll work up from there. So we're going to do a squiggle, kinda of make a little boat, and then another squiggle, and kinda of make another boat. So you wanna kind of have those edges curved in, because we want to remember that flower is going in. And then we'll add a petal here, and a petal here. And another one, and another one. And then we've kind of got all of our petals going around. All right. And so, after we've squiggled all of our lines, as we do, always the squiggly lines. We love our squiggly lines. We're gonna add our middle. So nice and nice and bunchy right in the middle. And we'll add our lines. So to make it look like it's curling in instead of curling out, we wanna put our lines on the bottom here to make it look, seem like those petals are coming from the bottom. So do the lines there, and then these ones we can push out. 
So if you're having trouble making your lines too squiggly, try not pushing very hard on your canvas. So you wanna have your hand be very light. You want the marker to just barely be touching because then it's nice and light and fluffy. So there's, there's that one. Okay, and then we'll do our triangle, our teardrop that's right beside it, because that one's also dry. So we can keep going with that part that's there. Turn it a little bit more. But, oh, I'll show you the reference. So that's what our little, our little teardrop one kind of looks like. This one's a little more spread out. So if your teardrop's really wide, that might be a really good way to make your teardrop. But mine's a little more narrow. So the first thing you want to do is kind of make a curve and then up. So you're almost making like a tilted, um, a tilted teardrop inside of your teardrop, just like that. And then you want to do it for the other side as well. Oof. So that's the other side of the teardrop. Just the same kind of thing. Move it up. And I'll just kind of keep going with our teardrops. And we'll do two more. This is the one I'm the least good at. I keep trying to make them look nice and they keep kind of looking funny. But you just keep moving around with all these lines and making it nice and squiggly. It looks all right. And we do a little teardrop at the very top and little dots all around. Maybe I'll add a few more dots. Oh, I didn't add dots in my other flowers, so I'll go back. It's the lovely thing about drawing. You can just go back and add them. So if you want to add dots into the other flowers we did, I like the look of the dots. So I'm going to put some dots in. Um, but there's my little teardrop. I don't love him that much, but he's looking okay. He helps add to the whole aesthetic, so we can't complain about him too much. All right, and we just have to keep moving. We've got lots of flowers to do, so I'm gonna try and move a little bit faster. So if you get lost, don't worry, just keep working. We're doing lots of squiggles. So the next one we're gonna do is a circle. So this is the easiest one. I think it's the easiest one. So it's that one there or this one here. So the only difference between these two is these are nice curved lines and these are wonky ones. So these are squiggly ones. So if you don't like the look of this one, I know it kind of looks like a cabbage to some people. You can work on that one. So all you gotta do is decide where the middle is. So you can see where I put my middle there. And then you just do little curves, little wonky lines, and you just build them up. And they get bigger, bigger and bigger with these little it's kind of like an M shape almost with the squiggles. But don't force yourself to make your squiggles look one way or another. Make sure you're keeping that pipe, that pen or that marker nice and light. So here, here's a few of it built up. So you can see how we're just building out. And as you get farther and farther and out, you can kind of make your squiggles a little bit bigger. to fill out the room. Squiggly, 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 squiggly. So that one, the more random you get with it, the better. That was more of an oval shape that I put into this round shaped flower, but that's all right. That's what that looks like. Okay. Now I think my flowers up here are dry, so we're going to go back to the top and do one of our star flower shapes, because we haven't done one of those yet. So we're going to make our center, mark it with a little dot, and we're going to woo, make our petals nice and big, nice and balloony. So if you go into the white, that's all right. So. We're gonna keep them nice, keep our, our star flower nice and squiggly. 
We want to make sure our lines are... Oh, I grabbed the wrong marker. Look at me. Are nice and wobbly. Nice and wiggly and wobbly. Moving all over the place. Again, if you get into the white, that's absolutely okay. We just want to make sure we show all different lines going away from that flower. Right, and we're gonna do our little center with all of our circles. Pull out some lines from the center to give it some depth. Keeping our hand nice and light when we do this, so then there's lots of different sizes of lines. Add some dots in at the end to give the flower a little bit of character. And there's our star flower. Looking pretty wild and free. All right, now I'm gonna do the other thing, other one right here. I'm gonna move a little bit faster, just cause I've got a lot of flowers to cover and not in much time. So we're gonna go over nice and squiggly. See that one there? Pulling out the center. Putting in our dots. And there's our second star flower. I didn't put as much white in that one. I don't think I liked that I forgot to put white in, but that's okay. Right, and I'm gonna do the next, I'm gonna do this little oval here. So it's gonna be the same as our big flower that we did here. So we're going to make that big petal in the front like it's kind of blooming open downwards. So I'm gonna find the petal that I want in the front. And build off it on the sides, and then do a big petal in the back. And I'm gonna add my swirlies. So it's harder to do these smaller flowers with a thicker pen. So you wanna be really careful with how many squiggles you are doing, just cause you can end up making it look really dark. So I'm not gonna do as many squiggles on this little flower. But there's that little guy, little tiny flower. Maybe I'll add some dots in him too. I really like polka dots, so I want all my flowers to be polka dotted. All right, and we can keep moving around. So now we're done all the way to the bottom here. So we're working on this guy here. So it's another oval one. So I think I'm gonna do just like we did on that little flower up there and do a big petal. It's facing downwards. And then do some over to the edge and then do one up top. And I'll put our middle in. Nice and nice and fluffy middle. And we'll pull our flower down. All the little lines. Oh, I didn't even do any squiggles around the outline. Well, I guess I gotta go back and do that. So you ever miss a step, just like it with the dots, you can just go back. It's beautiful, it's all scribbling. So you can do whatever you want. I'm gonna put some dots in this circle one I did as well, just to give it a little more random of a feel. And so our next one is a little circle, just a little circle there. So I'm gonna do more of those rounded edges. So if you don't like the rounds, that's okay. You don't have to do that one. You can do it just like the other one with the, with the squiggles. But the little round guy here, I'm gonna make circles going all the way around. And I'm just gonna keep adding circles, well, semi-circles, I guess. And it's kind of like bricks, you kind of want to put them in between, too. But if you don't, that's not a big deal. I didn't over here, I just kind of put one on top of the other, but that works. And as you go out, you can kind of make them bigger and bigger get into the white. That's okay. As we discussed before, I like it when it gets into the white. It gives it more texture. So there we are. So I'm going to put a bunch of dots in. And there's our second circle. And then while I'm here, while I'm holding it up, I'm going to do just this little, little tiny star. Like I said before, you don't want to do too much squiggling with the tiny ones, just cause they do look really dark if you do. So I'm just gonna add in a little bit, maybe 
a little more rough around the edges. Get a little more texture. There's our tiny one. All right, and we're halfway there, people. Okay, so next we're gonna do this really big one at the bottom here. So this really big star flower at the bottom. So find your middle and woo, woo, make those balloons. Oop, so I went off the middle a little bit here, but that's the beauty of having that really squiggly middle that we have for these flowers, is if you're off at the middle, you just hide that problem. Just cover it up with all your little circle squiggles. So there we go, no more middle problems. We're gonna go back over the edges, nice and wobbly. You don't want your circles to be too smooth. So you're gonna add in a bunch of circles that are wonky to give it more texture. And again, we're gonna pull out, just make that center nice and dark compared to our petals. Okay, and we'll add some, some dots to give it a little more life. And I've got another tiny, tiny star here that I'm gonna just quickly do. Make my little dots, add my little squiggles, and we're good to go. All right, so we've got a few big circly ones left. So we're gonna do another one that curves inwards. So I'm gonna do this petal, and I'm gonna do this petal, and then these ones are gonna be facing up. There we go. And then we're gonna make our center. So you don't want the center to go over the petals that are supposed to be in front of the center. But if you do, you can just make that line wigglier or bolder depending on what you want to do okay put those lines in put those lines in and these ones we got to make sure we're putting up from the bottom here to make sure you can see that that flower those petals are moving up from that side all right i kind of left this top here out of the flower so i'm just going to extend those petals a little bit so it looks like that was part of the flower so we've got this next one here so i think i'm going to do just like the one we did up top here I'm gonna make it have five petals so i'm gonna mark the middle divvy up my petals looks good and then draw my petals in. I find that's a lot easier with these really close together petals is to just let your marker make the petals and don't worry about painting petals in when they're this close together. We'll make our little center, make our outside. So it feels pretty repetitive at this point, but if you're getting the hang of it, they can start looking really cool. Because I know sometimes at the start, it's hard to get into the flow of doing a new style. And this style is very particular. It's not like anything I've ever done before. So it took me a few tries to really get that like wavy look down. But the fun part is, is that these are so easy to do. You can just keep making them. So we're gonna do another teardrop one here. I'm still not very good at this teardrop. I thought about taking it out, but I wanted to show that I'm not good at everything either. So if you're struggling or if you're, some of them look better than the others, that's okay, because so do mine. <laughs> so I'm gonna do my very best with this teardrop, but I, I have trouble making it look quite right with all the, the squiggles and worms. There's my little teardrop. He's trying his very hardest down there. Okay, we'll move on to that one there. So we'll do this one facing outwards. So I'm gonna put 
him facing this way. So I'm gonna give him his big petal on the bottom, building up those petals on the sides, on the sides, and then one in the back. Put that middle in, nice and fluffy middle. And we'll curve in all of our dramatic lines. So one thing about art, even this isn't quite painting at this point, but with drawing or with painting, you just have to keep practicing. That's the only way to get better at things. So if you're having trouble, if you're not really sure why it's not working out for you, just keep practicing. Just keep adding squiggles. It'll work out for you eventually. All right, so we've got only, well, three and one tiny flower left. So we're getting there. So this one's a pretty small one too. So I'm just gonna do a small squiggly circle one. Here, I'll get a little bit closer up. So that's how we started. And we're just gonna keep adding all of our little squiggles on there. Just squiggly, squiggly, squiggly. Lots of squiggles. See how it's adding up? Okay, I'm gonna put it back down. So if we just keep adding on all these squiggles, just till we get to the end, and we're gonna add some dots in just to make it feel a little more textured. So there's a little circle one. So we've got this big circle one and then another one here to go. So because we did that style, I think I'm gonna go back to having the petals. So I'm gonna mark off my petals. So that's what my intricate petal pattern looks like. And then go back in to make my petals happen. So there we go. Squiggle and we squiggle and we squiggle the middle. Squiggly, squiggly, squiggly. And we squiggle and we squiggle and we squiggle out to the outside. And then we add some polka dots because we love the polka dots. And we're down to our very last flower here. So this one's kind of a weird shape. I kind of did it an oval in the wrong direction, but that's because I wanted to see what we could do with this one. So if you've got an oval that's this way, if you're loving the look of these teardrop ones, I would encourage you to make it a teardrop because I'm having trouble with those ones. I'm going to try and make it more like one of these flowers down here that's facing up, but we're gonna make it face up. Um, as an oval like this. So I'm gonna do the two front petals, nice and wobbly front petals. We're gonna add in, well, it looks like three is gonna fit. Do all our squigglies, pull up from the bottom with those ones push out from the middle with the ones in the middle and then add some more squiggles because we love the squiggles <laughs> and that one's pretty dark but there that's how that ended up looking for me so it's a little bit of a different look than the other ones we've got going on but if that's what the shape you've ended up with then you can always do that oh i missed our tiny star flowers here So let's go back and quickly color those in. Give them a little more life. Okay. Some polka dots. Always the polka dots. Oh, I love polka dots. Okay. 
And there's our flowers. I think we got them all. Oh, no we didn't. <laughs> Missed one here. So we're just gonna make that a downwards facing flower. I mean upwards facing. Squiggle, squiggles. So the more of these you do, the easier you'll find to orientate the flowers, which way they should go, which ones fit in which kind of places, and it just gets easier as you go. And now we're gonna go through and we're gonna do all the leaves. So the leaves are much easier. So we'll just start with these two big ones in the corner so you can see what I'm doing. So first we're just gonna outline them. Nice and simple. If you go outside the lines, as stated before, no problem. You're gonna make a little middle line and then just kind of add leaf texture to it. So that's how that one looks. But you can do the same thing. Go over it a couple times. Make it nice and wiggly and swiggly. If you want to add only the the leaf shading, like shading coming off of one side, that works fine. And we're just gonna go around. We're gonna do that to all of our lovely leaves. Our trio, you just wanna do the same thing. When they're small like this, you don't wanna add too much. Just like with the little flowers, you don't wanna make them too dark. But you wanna give them some texture so then they don't look weird with all this other texture we've got going on. Okay, for these long ones, what we're gonna do with the long ones is we're going to do one line all the way down, do a little little leaf, and then we're gonna do another line all the way down, and then we're just gonna add leaves in all of these little spots we've got. So that's how that one's gonna look. It's another one that I'm like, eh, it looks kinda weird sometimes, but I think it just gives it a little more character, a little more fun. So yeah, mine looks a little bit weird, but that's okay. All right, we'll go up top here. And do some more leaves. So now we're just filling in the leaves all the way around. So you're just gonna do the same thing. Tracing them, giving them a little middle, giving them a little more shape being really loosey-goosey with all of our leaves because we don't have to be in the lines, we don't have to follow the rules. We do what we want with these leaves. So you wanna just do whatever. I really like this triangle shape leaf, so I'm doing a lot of those. But if you have more rounded leaves, that works fine too. Those can look really pretty sometimes. I just have a tendency to make all of my leaves. <laughs> this kind of pointy leaf. This one down here is a little bit more round, so maybe I'll round that one out so you can see that you can make them round too. All right, so the leaves take a lot less time so you don't have to worry about being careful with them. Make sure you're doing lots of texture around the edges and in the middle just to keep it looking similar. Okay, and we've got another one of these. So we're gonna go from the bottom, I'm gonna draw a line all the way up, do a little leaf, and then go all the way back down. And then just do little leaves on the sides just to fill it in. Okay, all right, we're getting there. So I'm gonna go back up here, just tell me reach. So this leaf, I hit the petals with, but that's okay. I'm just gonna attach it. They're supposed to be attached, so that looks fine. We can do a round leaf over here. And a nice long leaf over here. They're all the same flowers, but they all have different leaves. That's kind of a a problem, I guess, of, you know, 
not very realistic, but it's very pretty, so at least there's that. Okay, I'm gonna keep trading them. I think I got them all. Usually I miss some, but I think I got them all. So there's what our leaves look like, and amongst all of our flowers. So it's the same strategy of making it really messy, keeping your lines all over the place, not worrying about staying within the lines. You haven't seen my face in a while, hi. <laughs> and the last thing we're gonna do, just to fill in any of the gaps you still think are there, is we're gonna add some polka dots. I said I liked polka dots, and I wasn't lying. So I like to just go around and add some dots wherever I think there's room, where I think it fits. Maybe go around twice if you're still not happy with the amount of dots. And I also like to do circles. So you can see that one's right there. It's got white on the inside, so we're just doing a circle with that white on the inside. So if you don't, if you can't do that, you can just do black circles, but our circles don't have to be straight because nothing in our painting is straight. So if it's a wonky circle, it fits right in. And I'm just gonna keep adding black circles and white circles all over the place, wherever I want them. You can do bigger circles or smaller circles. It's just however you think, whatever you need, however it's looking, I'm gonna do some smaller circles. So I'm just pushing my pin and I'm not even making a circle. There, and there's our wreath just right on the hour. <laughs> so that's everything we're going to be doing today. So if you wanna put something in the middle of the wreath, if you wanna put your name right here, you're absolutely welcome to do that. I was gonna show you, so my name is Sierra, for anyone that doesn't know. So what I would do is I would take a piece of paper that's see-through and you can see where on either side your flowers are. So I would write your name on a sheet like this so you make sure it's gonna fit. And then if you use charcoal on the back side of the paper and then draw really hard on the letters, it'll transfer over and then you can write your name in the middle there or whoever else's name you want. And that's how it'll end up looking. Since we're right at four o'clock, I'm not going to be writing my name on there, but I think it looks quite pretty just as a wreath on its own. I ended up making it a little bit more square than I anticipated, but I'm so excited. If anyone did this, please post a picture of yours in the comments of this video. I would love to see them. Um, I think it's a really fun technique, and I really encourage you to keep practicing and keep doing that kind of technique because it is so random, it is so fun, and it's so unique. And it's not, it's not worrisome. If your flower is in the perfect size, then it's perfect. And I think that's like the best kind of painting is when your mistakes make it better. All right, with that, I'm going to say goodbye everyone. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you all later.